Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Abdullah Kamen, and in this short video, I'll be showing you a few tips and tricks on how to uh, manipulate date and time, how to merge them, how to uh, separate them in uh, separate cells, and other things as well. So the first thing, I mean, we before we uh, dig into this, I mean, you need to um, understand, as we did with the dates, that uh, also you need to understand how Excel stores time. That is very important. So time is stored in Excel as a number, um, but that number is not a whole number, it is a fraction. So time is stored in Excel as a fraction, okay, a fraction of one, that is being the one day, okay. So to prove that, you select the time and you go here and uh, select the general format, which basically is going to strip down, I mean, uh, take away any format that has been applied. Um, and that will give you the true form of the time as it is stored in Excel. As you can see here, it is a fraction um, of one day. All right. If it's a fraction, then uh, 0.25 is going to be 6 in the morning. 0.5 is going to be noon. 0.75 is going to be 6 p.m. So let's see if that's true. So selecting those fractions and uh, defining them or formatting them as time, you can see that this is actually true. So uh, uh, 6 a.m., noon, and 6 p.m., okay? So with that in mind, we can start working on date and time. Uh, and dates, if you haven't seen the previous video about dates, dates are stored in Excel as whole numbers, and, uh, and it is called a uh, serial number. So basically, it's the number of days. So each day is stored in Excel as a number of days since January 1st, 1900. Okay, cool. Uh, so if you have date and time uh, separated in, uh, in two cells and you would like to merge them to be in one cell, since they are numbers, uh, you can basically just add them up. And when you add them up, because um, uh, time will never be equal to one or greater than one, um, that means that the integer will always stay intact and the fraction is going to be always, uh, so it's like you gluing them together basically. All right, so as you can see here, we get the uh, date and time together in one cell. And uh, sometimes this is needed because you would like uh, maybe to create a chart um, you know, where um, you need to, to include the date uh, as well as the time, all right? Uh, so to see how this is stored in Excel, uh, you go, as we said before, and use the general format. And as you can see here, you see um, a whole number here representing the date and uh, the fraction uh, is representing the time, okay? So let's put back uh, this back to the right format. So what if now we'd like to go uh, back? Uh, so from a merged um, cell, uh, so from a merged status for the um, date and time in one cell, you'd like now to uh, extract the date in separate cell and extract the time in a separate cell. So extracting the date, um, this is where um, having the understanding that the date is actually a whole number uh, will enable you to um, to achieve that. So basically, since the date is a number, so we can extract it by using the integer function. And as the, um, you know, the, the function uh, describes here, it surrounds a number down to the nearest integer. And this is what exactly, uh, what we exactly need. So you take the number, which is the uh, date and time merged, and uh, the integer number is going to give you, or the integer function is going to give you uh, the date. Uh, it's going to extract the date, and as you can see here, the time is zero down now. Okay, and uh, because we don't need this um, time because it's zero, we can change the format uh, to short date, so we get the date only uh, represented here. So now, as you can see here, this uh, column equals to this column now. So extracting the time is a bit different. We use a function called mod. Mod basically is going to give you the fraction of any number if you divide it by one. Uh, the other application of the mod function is basically it's going to give you the remainder 
after a number is being divided by another number. Okay, so if you divide uh, 10 by 6, you will get uh, the mod is going to be 4. Okay, so it's the remainder after uh, the number is being divided by a divisor. Okay, so if we take the number uh, that the uh, function requires here and we give it the date and time merged here and we divide it by one so we are not changing uh, what the number is and um, and then we apply the mod functions the mod function is going to look at the fraction as the remainder of the division all right so now as you can see here we get uh, this result which is weird because we can see that the day is zero okay which that doesn't make sense as well so um, this tells you something that okay my calculation is correct probably we are just in the wrong format so always when you see some strange results okay the first thing you do you go up here be before you know judging anything okay just go up and uh, change to the general format and when you change the general format you will see your results and you can judge it and say, okay, is my calculation correct or not? So, great. So, uh, the format has been actually inherited from uh, the date function. And since the date is zero, because we are extracting the time only, so the uh, the date portion appeared to have uh, a day of zero. Okay. So, it is always about what correct format you use to display the number. Okay how excel s stores the number is always going to be the same it's not going to change so good we know that our calculation is correct it was only in the wrong format so we select the right format now and as you can see here we're getting our results correct and this column actually equals now to this column so we got it back uh, to where it was before right sometimes uh, you need to extract the hour um, as a number right I mean from this time uh, we'd like to extract you know five and uh, to compare it most of the time right and um, uh, imagine if you'd like to check if that you know uh, what if that time is it uh, afternoon or morning is it a.m. or p.m. you will normally like to use the uh, ex use the extract hour here uh, function uh, to com to do that comparison all right so we can say um, hour and this is gonna return the hour as a number from 0 to 23 uh, so the result is a number okay so this uh, function requires a serial number which is the time here and uh, what's gonna return it's gonna return to us a number from 1 to 23 and this is what I said um, in the last video as well you need always to um, have them you know whenever you use any function you need to be aware of two things the first thing is uh, what is the syntax which is basically what the number uh, uh, sorry what the function requires and the second thing you need to be aware of is what is the return type is it going to be a number or a text or a logical value so you need to be aware of that so when you see your results you'll figure out okay is this the result that I need uh, so as you can see here we extracted the um, the hour and we can compare now this as a, norm, a normal number. So uh, we can use this uh, another function to extract the minute. It's called minute. Okay, and uh, same as well. It's going to give us a number from uh, 1 to uh, 59. Okay, same for the second. It's going to extract the seconds from any time that you give it, or even date with the time that is merged together. Okay okay so we got the hour the minute and uh, and the seconds all right um so uh we get now to the last um the last thing here um so um this is one of the most important and most of the time overlooked you know um tip uh, which is something called the elapsed time it's a time it's a format it's a number format okay but what it's going to give you, it's going to give you a view of the hours when it exceeds, you know, uh, it's going to give you basically a duration. So if we have an end time and start time here and we would like to calculate, let's say we have a um, machine in a factory 
that stopped at certain date and time and it uh, came back working you know on another date and time so you would like to figure out you know how long it stayed um, you know off of duty so uh, we can take the end date and time we say minus because these are numbers uh, minus date and time uh, of the start and we hit enter and as you can see we get a number here so um, the uh, whole number here is basically the number of days okay and the fraction now this is a fraction of a day okay but it's it's a duration it is not a um, it's not an hour okay so most people will just use these in reports right maybe um, round them down to uh, to two decimals but you, you wouldn't figure out you know uh, four days and 44 you know of a day uh, what is it exactly? Uh, nobody knows. So uh, to present them in a uh, meaningful format, that's something that people can use in reports, uh, you basically need to use the correct format. And the correct format is basically this one here that you see at the top. So you put HH between square brackets and uh, the minutes. Okay, so to get the number of hours this machine has stopped working and the minutes. Okay. So select the column, go to, um, you can go to the small arrow here. It's going to bring up the, um, the format sales window. And um, you need to go to custom uh, to do that the way you want it. Uh, there is one here that says 30, 55, and, but we, we don't want the fractions at the end there. So we're going to use custom so we can define our format the way we want it so we say uh, double H and then M M for the minutes and as you can see here the sample will give us uh, 114 hours and 8 minutes so applying this format you can get the right number of hours now so we can see that we have hours that can go up to 200 hours here and the minutes is gonna always uh, zero to uh, you know once you hit um, you know 60 uh, minutes basically okay so this is the elapsed time and this is the last thing in our video i hope you guys got something out of this video and found it useful and hope to see you um, in the next video thank you so much for watching see you next time